Studio Pixel Punk took direct inspiration from titles like The Legend of Zelda, Metroid, and Dark Souls when creating Unsighted. It takes the expansive, interconnected world of a Metroid game, the deep dungeon dives with the puzzles and secrets of a Zelda game, and the difficulty and combat management of a Dark Souls game. Unsighted is a graceful fusion of each gameplay style, while adding its own distinct story, world, and mechanics. The city of Arcadia was once inhabited by humans and their machine creations, automatons. When a meteor containing a strange energy called Anima crashed into Arcadia, it gave automatons consciousness. They gained the ability to think, feel, and share emotions, making many of their differences to humans indistinguishable. All but a few humans then fled the city, returning later only to attack the automatons. The crater tower was placed over the meteor, sealing away the automatons' access to anima, stripping them of their consciousness. Automatons who lost the remaining anima became unsighted, becoming violent and only craving more anima. You control Alma, who awakens after the war with humankind. Alma wakes up in an abandoned lab that becomes this great tutorial area, teaching you the basic controls you'll use for the rest of the game. You start in this pitch black room with light coming only from yourself and a healing syringe. The use of this light convinces you, naturally, to pick up this syringe off the ground and use it, which lights up the rest of the room. You're an automaton, remember? The syringe doesn't have to be clean. Probably. I notice similarities to Metroid almost immediately. At the start of Metroid, your first upgrade, the Morph Ball, is on the path to your left. This path drops you into a small space, trapping you with an exit too small to walk through. The only way you're able to leave is by making use of your newly acquired upgrade, freeing you from your tiny prison. In Unsighted, you'll reach the Weapons Research Room, and drop down a path with nothing but a chest, blocked off by some bushes. Opening the chest grants you a sword that you need to learn how to equip and use in order to cut down these bushes. Small moments like these teach you, while limiting you to a small safe space to figure the way out on your own. The last thing you'll learn is a little combat. You'll have a few enemies block your path that you'll have to defeat to get by. But once you get the password to leave the lab, you're ambushed by a shadow creature, and you need to run. Head toward the elevator to make your escape. Fail to do so, and you're met with an early demise, cementing these creatures as a threat. Shadow creatures appear throughout the game, and are a contrast visually to what came before. They're very dangerous and very aggressive, so the game makes sure to hammer that fact into your head. After escaping the lab, you meet Iris, a fairy bot who offers to accompany you to meet Vanna, in hopes she can help sort out your missing memories. While the lab exists to teach you the controls, Iris will teach you the mechanics and any other helpful information along the way. After a surprise trip to the ER, you wake up in Gear Village, are given your goals, and are sent out into the world of Arcadia. When you finish with the game's introduction, you might notice a number of hours remaining when talking to any of the automatons. Well, that's because without access to more anima, everyone, including Alma, only has a finite amount of time left before they become unsighted. It's up to Alma to collect the five meteor shards scattered around Arcadia in order to enter the crater tower and release the meteor's enema back into Arcadia. Alma needs to do all of this while regaining her memory and finding her partner Raquel. Gear Village is home to most of the remaining automatons. As you acquaint yourself with others, they'll provide some sort of helpful service. Whether that be upgrading your weapons, selling chips to boost your stats, or by selling supplies or blueprints in order to build helpful gear yourself. You'll start to rely on others to help make you stronger, incentivizing you to make the most of the time you have left. Because once they're gone, you'll need to become more self-sufficient. The faster you're able to gather the five meteor shards, the more automatons you'll be able to save. Having to beat the game within a time limit sounds intimidating, right? I mean, not only are you solving sliding block puzzles, but if you take too long, your fishing buddy will become a mindless killing machine. But that's the magic of Unsighted. Unsighted's constantly ticking clock makes for one of the most interesting, dynamic, and thematically strong games I've played in a long time. You're constantly reminded how much time you and everyone else have left. Your own time is displayed everywhere, during conversations, each time you enter a new location, on the pause screen, and of course, after a player death. As you explore Arcadia, you'll find Meteor Dust, a rare material that can extend the time before an automaton becomes unsighted. 
This one item elevates the game on so many levels. Remember, every single character has their own timer, some with more time than others. It becomes your job to check up on, take care of, and become closer with those around you. Which is easy to do with the in-game contact list showing each character their time, current location, along with in-game notifications when each automaton is low on time. The longer a villager is around, the better help they're able to provide. The more meteor dust you gift, the closer you become and you'll receive unique abilities when you max out your friendship. So it's kind of like Stardew Valley, but instead of gifting a nice bottle of wine, you're giving the gift of keeping them from kicking the bucket for another 24 hours. The first thing you'll want to do is save everyone, right? But when that no longer seems like a possibility, you have tough choices to make. Your friends can't help you when they're low on time. It's not a flick of the switch to become unsighted. You see them struggling with their condition. Do you let those go with little time that provide little help? Or do you spend your precious resource keeping them around a little longer? Do you only focus on those who are most helpful and ignore those who aren't? Do you give more time to those who might not need it in order to befriend and get their final reward? This is all without mentioning that your time is most important. If you give too much and take too long, then you won't have enough time to complete your own mission and free everyone. You have plenty of options to keep Alma from becoming unsighted. Alma has more time than most, so it'll be a while before her and a few others start to become affected. So rationing meteor dust becomes your primary objective. But as time moves on, you get this sinking feeling that you can't save everyone. Your options become more desperate when you and others become harder to care for. They even had the nerve to introduce a mysterious character who can steal anima from others, giving their remaining time to Alma while turning the victim unsighted. When I checked who had the most anima, just out of curiosity, it was Joanna and Gabby. The game wanted me to insidiously separate loving partners for anima. These tough decisions illustrate just how bad things have gotten for the automatons since the humans attacked and how hopeless things seem without Alma's help. Arcadia is a somber place. Not only is it a place that humans abandoned, but it's a place that they came back to only to further devastate with a war against their now sentient creations. Automatons have few to trust and are bound to a city with a growing number of unsighted. All of the locations you visit have a striking amount of detail each reflecting the remnants of humanity with their own story to tell. Gear Village was built by humans, explaining its ornate, Asian-inspired architecture and surrounding gardens left to the automatons. The museum is filled with a library of books that contain the history of both humans and automatons. The aquarium was a place for entertainment and study. Highways were once used for transit and the transportation of goods. The factories were humans once built automatons to be used as tools before they gained consciousness. Even gravestones were placed to remember those who were lost during the war with humans. The music feels surprisingly human too. It matches the somber nature of events, while being flexible enough to also be tense and hopeful, sometimes all in the same song. Unsighted soundtrack is a beautiful listen that feels cozy, intense, and appropriate. Arcadia is a large, interconnected world that doesn't feel large to navigate. You'll discover multiple paths that loop into one another, with shortcuts making future travel easier. The map is dotted with teleporters that can be used to equip chips, heal, and teleport between locations. The more of the map you explore, the more helpful tools you'll find to make yourself stronger and be better able to explore new locations. Some of the most helpful upgrades and weapons are found in the five main dungeons. Sometimes you're simply taught movement that Alma has from the start to help reach new heights. There's so much fun movement that makes exploration, speedrunning, and combat really impactful. Alma's dodge doubles as a jump. When jumping you can simply tap to move out of the way, but you can also run before jumping to gain more distance. Or you can hold the jump button to roll after you hit the ground. You get so much utility out of your movement. The more you either unlock or are just taught about Alma's abilities, the more it can be applied to both combat and exploration. There's always a preferred path for Alma to take if you feel overwhelmed or lost. Characters in Unsighted are very helpful. Before you set out, you're shown the location of your main goal, the 5 Meteor Shards, labeled 1 through 5 as a suggestion from Vana. However, throughout the game, characters will mark helpful locations on your map in an organic way that helps you reach your closest current goal or solve your most pressing problems. But it's still up to you to find your own way to that destination. 
The dangerous shadow creatures that roam certain areas in Arcadia are called out by Iris to avoid. This is a smart way of providing a heavy suggestion to new players to avoid these locations, while not outright taking away your freedom to explore. While you explore, you're rewarded with meteor dust, money, and resources for crafting. I'm usually put off by crafting in games, but it's done in a really clever way here. You unlock blueprints as you play that give you instructions to successfully craft anything. The catch is you don't actually need them. During your first playthrough, you rely on them to learn recipes, or you'll just find what you need out in the world. But once you know how something is made, you can use that knowledge to craft without a blueprint. Crafting primarily becomes a tool for repeat playthroughs that give you access to important resources early. And because multiple tools can be used to navigate the same environment in different ways, you're bound to make consistent progress. Your hunt for the five meteor shards bring you to large dungeons guarded by powerful automatons, trusted with the meteor shards before becoming unsighted. These dungeons are masterfully designed. Each have their own distinct visual and mechanical identity, like using light and darkness to change platforms and walls in your path, or hard to reach switches that change a cart's path over bottomless pits. Others use ice to cross water, or rising and lowering heat to transport a mech. These mostly environmental puzzles, give or take a few sliding block puzzles that must be contractually obligated to appear in Zelda-inspired games for some reason, result in keys to open locked doors. Tools found within the dungeons become keys themselves, letting you better navigate. These tools double as combat options, since dungeons aren't limited to just puzzles. They also include intense combat challenges. My favorite part of Unsighted's dungeon design is the blurred lines between the dungeons and the rest of the world. Every dungeon has some sort of break in its flow. For some, it's as simple as a path leading outside, contrasting the intensity of a dungeon with beautiful, peaceful outdoor scenery, illustrating the passing of time by showing a view of the skyline with only the sounds of nature. Other dungeons, like the caves, aren't just the caves. You need to exit and enter the caves, giving you objectives to complete in the nearby gardens and surrounding areas before ending up back in the caves. These moments kept me grounded to the world, reminding me I'm on the clock, while giving me a moment to just take in the scenery. Unsighted's combat is perfect. Everything about it is challenging, rewarding, and most importantly, fun. Every second, there's a new decision to make. You don't have access to all of your health at one time, relying on healing syringes for refills. This keeps enemies a threat if they do large amounts of damage or overwhelm you when you can't find a moment to heal. The biggest impact on combat is how well you manage your stamina bar. Stamina is responsible for letting you attack, run, and dodge. If you can't manage your stamina bar, you'll never excel in combat. That's how important it is. Limited stamina means you need to properly engage and interact with each enemy. You won't be able to mindlessly swing your weapon until they're dead. You need to pick and choose the right time for offense and defense. Any enemy can be a threat if you aren't paying attention, exponentially in numbers. Bosses that spawn enemies are not afraid to keep doing so. You need to finish your plate so that you aren't completely overwhelmed once more show up. The key to mastering stamina and combat is by mastering parry. By parrying at the right time, you can counter an enemy's attack, leaving them stunned and vulnerable to a critical hit. A perfect parry also refills your stamina bar. If you're good enough, you can deal damage, perform a perfect parry, crit for big damage, and refill your stamina to continue your attack. Perfecting combat feels so satisfying. While yes, you can equip better gear for Alma, how you play will always be the most impactful. You can deal big damage just by playing well. Enemies and even bosses can be demolished in seconds if you're skilled enough. Countered only by how devastating the consequences for making mistakes are when out of stamina or missing a parry. Everything about an enemy's actions are telegraphed, from the animations, sound design, to basic red warning markers. When all of the important information is clearly understood, all that's left is your reaction time. You won't make mistakes that don't feel like your own. My only complaint is that enemies will flash when they're taking damage. That flash makes it hard to look for moments where enemies turn red to convey an incoming attack. That's not the only way attacks are telegraphed, just the easiest and most consistent to read. Alma has a variety of weapons and tools to use in combat. However, the two main weapon types are between the sword and axe, with their elemental variants. 
Between stamina and weapon speed, the sword and axe feel really well balanced. The axe does an absurd amount of damage, but with its low swing speed and high stamina usage, it makes your window of opportunity much smaller. Add on to the fact that multiple enemies complicate things even further. The sword on the other hand is much faster, uses much less stamina, but trades high damage for consistency. Ranged weapons have just enough utility while keeping combat focused on close quarters. They can still be invested in to become a viable focus, with a skill check that can dramatically shorten your reload length with the correct timing. Unsighted is by no means an easy game. Until you're completely familiar with it, you will die. Money is dropped on death, meaning you need to reclaim it before your next death, which results in a complete loss. But more importantly, what happens when you die? Well, first you respawn at the last teleporter. That's to be expected, right? But what was your most precious resource? Time. With every death, you're shown Alma's remaining time left. With every death, you need to navigate back to where you died, and fight through the same enemies in your path, which takes time, subtracting from your most important and irreplaceable resource. They succeeded at making death meaningful and provided an impactful consequence using the same mechanics that drive the rest of the game. Unsighted's focus on time essentially introduces players to speedrunning in a natural way. Once you've become so familiar with the game, the only way you can further show your mastery over it is by completing it or beating the game faster. Unsighted acknowledges and rewards you for doing both. Your second playthrough will be drastically different from your first, purely because of you improving on your skills and knowledge of the game. Those shadow creatures from before? Earlier I said you needed to run or avoid them, but if you're confident in yourself, you can just ignore Iris' warning and fight every single one of them. You're even rewarded for it in the game's introduction. Everything you learn from your first playthrough, from movement options, passwords, to blueprints, is useful. You'll obtain so much freedom and become more efficient with each playthrough. The replay value is improving at the game, and being able to do more with the limited time you have. Saving every automaton will become an achievable goal. You can even choose to bring over blueprint information when starting a new game, so that you don't need to memorize or use outside resources to remember crafting instructions. I only wish they could have done the same with the few passcodes and switch orders found in the world, so I wouldn't need to write them down. They even have completionists covered. Unsighted is filled with optional side objectives that have you interacting with other automatons in Arcadia. Optional areas contain some of the most challenging combat encounters in the game, and the world is filled with secrets for you to discover. By taking the time to complete the game, and by meeting certain secret conditions, you can even reset time allowing you the freedom to take as much time as you need to get everything, while rewarding you the ability to reset everyone's time to complete the game. The completion route, in essence, is providing more meaningful and more challenging gameplay. A dungeon raid and boss rush mode are even included. Dungeon raid has randomly connected areas pulled from the main game that focuses on combat challenges from room to room, and boss rush lets you challenge every boss in the game back to back. These additions are super important because now you have two smaller sized pick up and play game modes that don't have the same time commitment or timed approach that the main story has. I think that the most exciting thing is that every mode mentioned, including the main story, is playable in co-op. Finally, Unsighted does feature Explorer Mode. Explorer Mode disables the time mechanic entirely. Options are nothing but a good thing, and Studio Pixelpunk implemented this while communicating the intended experience to its players. The language they use on the difficulty selection screen is crystal clear. The second mode, Action Girl, is the recommended choice and the intended challenge level. They did this while adding an easier option for accessibility that can be selected at any time, and even a harder option, Robot Apocalypse, for those looking for a challenge. That's Unsighted, one of the best games I've played in a long time. Studio Pixelpunk succeeded at what they were trying to do. They knew what their inspirations were and used exactly what worked while adding their own ideas and world to create something truly special. This is a game that truly rewards you for wanting to replay it. A game that respects its players, provides a foundation to guide them without stripping away and actively encouraging their freedom to explore, discover, and make their own path. With time mechanics that strengthen every aspect of its core design, story, and gameplay combat fine-tuned to perfection to be challenging and satisfying, with a real tangible consequence for death. 
Unsighted was such a memorable game for me, and I truly look forward to whatever it is Studio Pixel Punk works on next. Thanks for watching to the end. Consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this, and subscribe to the second channel for live stream uploads. I live stream on Twitch, and I also have a Discord. If you really like my content, please consider sending a tip on Ko-fi. All tips go back into my content by purchasing games for future videos or live streams. Links to all of these platforms can be found in the description below.